Welcome everyone from around the world to Planet IMEX for our session, How to Produce Expert Hybrid Events in Five Steps. I'm Sarah Kleppel, Content Developer of Destinations and Features for Meetings Today. And I'm Marianne Pierce, Founder and CEO of Map Digital, a hybrid events company. And we are coming to you live from New York City where Marianne is at her offices and I am in Baltimore. And we are on Map Digital's Meta Meetings platform. Um, so do you want to tell us a bit about the platform, uh, Marianne, and kind of what we're looking at? I'd be happy to, Sarah. Um, on this platform uh, is being streamed to you. Uh, Sarah and I are in Zoom rooms, and our, our technicians are taking that video and making it into an embedded stream. You'll see next to us an Ask a Question button. Please use it. We want to save time at the end for your questions. If we do not get to your questions, we will answer you afterwards. Also on the MetaMeetings platform, I would love for you to go to the library and social media page. That's where we've posted some of the really great content on hybrid events that Meetings Today has, has curated, as well as some of the um, tips that uh, Map Digital is, some of, some of our processes, uh, some things that we'll also cover in this session. We also will um, be releasing this video uh, this webcast on demand so maybe sometime probably early tomorrow morning it'll be ready so if you want to come back and watch it or refer someone else to we'd be really delighted to share that content with you or with other people within our industry so this is our meta meetings platform this is how we've been producing hybrid events for the last 15 years so um, we're not new to this game <laughs> yeah, thank you to, again to everybody for joining us and thanks again to Marianne for helping us put this session together. Um, we work with Marianne uh, most recently on a contributed article that she wrote for us about the five key considerations that a planner needs to keep in mind when getting into the hybrid game and you can find that like she mentioned in the library tab. And this session will also uh, expand on that article quite a bit. But, um, but Marianne is also um, one of meetings today's uh, 20 trendsetters of 2020. Um, so uh, selecting trendsetters is something that meetings today does every year and they're all profiled in one of our summer issues um, and also are featured online. But this year we did things a little differently. Our trendsetters are always professionals in this industry who are you know, bright and capable and forward thinking. But this year we of course could not ignore the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, so we shifted uh, quite a bit to looking at meetings and hospitality professionals who, you know, really stepped up during this time to help others in the industry, you know, navigating this crisis. And Marianne was definitely one of those people who stepped, uh, stepped up to help. And um, she was nominated, like many of our trendsetters are, um, by a reader who noted that at the start of the COVID lockdown, she really made time to share her knowledge and experience with hybrid, uh, with corporate association and independent planners, um, even when she knew most likely they wouldn't become customers because Map Digital, a lot of their clients are um, financial clients. Um, and you, you and uh, Marianne ended up helping uh, a lot of people with, with that knowledge. Well, I'm, you know, Sarah, it was my honor. I mean, well, I think all of us can say, you know, we were completely scared in this surreal environment. That, that, that just was thrust upon us. And, you know, we are all in this together. Um, so if I could have been helpful to people, that was great. Now it did get to be, as I would say, incoming, um, but you know, you learn to cope. But I think around, you know, the whole discussion was really, the, if you remember back, you know, so many months ago, we didn't know what was gonna happen. That was the big penny that needed to fall. That was the more where the fear is. Some of us thought we'd get back in a few months, but it looks like that wasn't what happened. So it was a collective, um, let's say, um, uh, breath holding <laughs> for all of us, yeah. So, and I think that, you know, with COVID, I think the, the biggest thing that I th has become an accelerator to really push our industry into their digital transformation. The events industry has been teetering for a while. We've been digital, I mean, for almost 25 years, been webcasting and the financial services mandate that webcasting. That's why we're there, that's our wheelhouse. But, you know, I didn't see a lot of adaptation with really being truly some of the goodness of the digital. Well, that has changed. We only, the only game in town we have right now is virtual and digital. But let's look at some other industries that have been disrupted. Medicine, retail, education. So we're not alone. And we're all going to have to 
recollect, re recollect, reform, and reimagine our industry to come back stronger. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, let's talk a bit about Map Digital and kind of how you guys adjusted uh, post shutdown in those earlier days, and maybe kind of what you learned from it. Well. We always get these surprises in life, you know, um, and this was a surprise. We knew a little bit before maybe the rest of the industry, since we work in the financial services, they have great intelligence. And when they told us they were going to shut down their office, we were like, what are you talking about? Because that's where their conference center is. And we just, and I just stood up and I said to our staff, temps, whoever was in the office, to the whiteboard, which is right back there. We like to write on the wall. When you build software, you you know you're always it's part of design thinking and and at being agile to do all that. So we, we do that, and we sat around. We go, my gosh, you know we're used to capturing our speakers in ballrooms. Now we have to capture them in Zoom. So we talked and talked and talked. And this is my staff here, a uh, part of our staff. Our staff has grown exponentially. I think we are almost at almost four times um, the our original pre-COVID uh, staff. It was like, we just needed to like open the MetaMings platform. So it just takes the video from a Zoom as if it was somebody in the back of a ballroom. But that wasn't the most tricky part. The tricky part was how do we produce? So we have took photographs through Zoom of our staff members at their new workstations, which is their kitchen table or in their bedroom or spare room. And this is their new normal. And then we just went right back into our equipment and just shipped out equipment to Minneapolis, Los Angeles, to our team all over the country. And some of my staff members go, well, shouldn't we wait a little bit? And I said, no, because I've gone through 9-11, Sandy, it's like disaster recovery, get it out there. Because who knows, that could have been the last time we could have done it. And if I was wrong, a couple thousand dollars of a UPS bill, eh, it happens. So. That's how we had to get through everything. Um, and our clients are financial services. They don't stop. It's about trading. So we were expected to take what was a physical con conference and make it virtual in a heartbeat. And we did. And, you know, we learned a lot of things and we really had to work at, at triple speed but it it is a different beast. It's a different way of, of thinking and a different way of working. But um, the real thing that 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 really the critical mass that happened is that we did a a virtual event on March 23rd for my friend Diane Devitt, the age of the coronavirus. Um, it was a really really good. Um, it was a webcast. It was how we do it on our MetaMings platform, and I curated a panel of uh, was virtual events the new normal. I thought I you know, coined that phrase, but I guess it was the first time I heard it, but anyway, I don't think it really is mine. And invited some industry experts to sit around. Now, if you can just go back, we were shock and awe. We were just trying to process. Now, I'm practically a digital native, even though gener generationally I'm not, but I've been in the digital space for so long that I was trying to assure people that, you know, there is benefits up there and there is some good things that can happen. But it was really the shock the morning of the face-to-face. -face. And one of my colleagues thought we'd be back by June. And I'm like, I don't think so. I think this is not a sprint. It's a long march. So once it was over, literally my email blew up. It was like somebody, yeah, somebody, somebody was like, you know, like sky wrote my, my, sky wrote my name on the cloud or something. <laughs> I was just getting just inundated from LinkedIn and from my email and um, you have to help me. And I'm like, I don't know you. I don't know your business. I don't know how you do your conferences. Um, it was, everyone was so pressured. A lot of these planners had so much pressure because they had cancellations to deal with, which was, undo you know, we had Jonathan Howe on, on this uh, age of coronavirus and it was just, unbelievable to look at all the all the, all the legal stuff ha that has to happen but it was like they had no reference they didn't their organization didn't have a digital strategy they didn't quite anticipate this and they were calling me asking me for a budget and i'm like for what you know we need to get all the stakeholders at the table so you know i'm not a good mind reader but one of the things that you know i one of the first steps 
of our five steps that we're going to be talking about today is in um, you can turn uh, change the next slide please is basically the first step is get your client internal and external client stakeholders at the table and on the same page because this is not a temporary solution this is how we're going to go forward it's going to be integrated into hybrid and even when we do go back to face to face like we're used to we're not going to leave behind what we learned in digital so this is a long-term strategy it's a corporate association and it's all hands on deck because these are the people who that this strategy will, will influence first of all let's get the business owner the account manager who owns the profit and loss who's the person who's paying for this since this is such a radical disruption the ceo and the coo and the cfo need to be part of this decision making sales and marketing these are the people who are really disrupted uh you know how are you going to talk to your customer your attendee you know to your distribute to your exhibitors to your sponsors these are things that they need to be weighed in what how do they measure success and how do they get need to get their job done and also find out a little bit later on there's going to be some benefits of going virtual that they never even experienced before so let's bring that up to them now so they can start integrating it into their strategy for their department probably the most important person to get in now that you go digital and you're in the hybrid or virtual but now soon to hybrid is IT and security you're collecting people's email addresses their personal private information and you're collecting content slides which can be considered intellectual property in certain circumstances this is data and data needs to be protected and this is a place you cannot skimp on you need to make sure that whoever you choose as a vendor and the multiple partners that they have data security because the u.s government has a, a mandate a law called third party oversight tpo write it down and take it to your team even if map digital makes a mistake in the data my client's responsible the government is not letting you pass the buck and blame it on the vendor. You are responsible. So this is something to take very seriously, especially when we are in all digital space. And also your communications, PR, your education and learning. Because one thing you're gonna be learning is that we're gonna have video. Now we have this video byproduct that was more difficult to collect in face-to-face. -face. Now it's easy. Hey, can learning repurpose it? Can we put little snippets together to like, you know, um, reach out in social media and, and build audiences? You have a digital asset now that you can play with and it could benefit them a lot. So I like to say when things like 9-11 happens and Sandy, and I saw this when I was a little girl watching TV with my dad in the Tonight Show was George Carlin going, when a situation's out of control, assume as much control as possible. So when people were calling me, and uh, we, I developed something that I needed to know so I could give them the budgets and, and, and the advice. And it's the 10 critical questions. So everyone who said, oh yes, they wanted a demo or whatever, I said, yeah, I would love to do all these things, but would you, would you help me help you? Would you please fill this in? So the first one to seven questions are pretty tactical, are pretty who, what, when, where, why. It's in any marketing plan. You know, it's sort of like common sense, but I need to have that because that's the framework in which I can build a budget or can build a recommendation. The eighth, ninth, and tenth threw a lot of people because if these are things they're not used to being asked in a face-to-face, -face, maybe RFP or a face-to-face -face, uh, building of a, of a budget or a plan. And the eighth one is, where do you want your content usage data to go, your attendees content usage data, every time they click on a website or a slide or ask a question, is it all recorded? Where do you want that to go? They go, well, wow, we don't know what to do with that. Well, that's why you get your stakeholders, your marketing department will know what to do with it, your sales might know what to do with it, maybe even learning. So this is the whole thing that we're getting out of our silo thinking, this, this disruption, this digital dis uh, this digital transformation in the events industry is getting more people at the table and more um, participation, more inclusion. Um, with the video asset, what do you want to do with it? You're going to ignore it? I think you could find some multiple uses out of it that can help you 
you know, really grow revenue and increase relevance. So I'm sure your marketing people will help you with that. And then, you know, I mentioned before is that your speakers have huge, huge networks. This is content marketing. You have that video asset of their thought leadership. We've experimented with sending out those snippets, we call them, really hitchhiking on the speaker's network to build the notice of the conference brand. And some of the, some of the, some of the data has been really astounding. So what I did was is that the planner would come back and fill this in and I would have a Zoom call. And one time I had a Zoom call and there were like 12 people on the call and I was delighted. I was a little overwhelmed. I was delighted and I go, <clears throat> so marketing, what do you think? Sales, what do you think? I mean, I'm an outside person. I could be a little bolder and say, well, how's this? Have you considered this? You know, so I could really have a very, very, very deep meeting. That would have taken months to find out. We don't have months. We were disruptive. We had to come together quickly. Yeah. So that's the first step. Amazing. Um, yes, yeah, so you're talking a little bit about Map Digital and its technology and a little bit about its process, especially from the last couple of months. Um, but there's you know, a lot of technology out there. Um, so maybe how is a planner you know, supposed to navigate uh, into a hybrid situation? Oh yeah, there's a lot of technology out there. And this is step two. There's a lot of technology and there's some great technology that do certain things. But what a planner needs to do and the organization needs to do, it's not just there because this is, this is should be an institutional decision, is they need integration. So take your technology stack and integrate it into a hybrid event platform. You'd think about your attending. If they're watching a webcast or a Zoom and they want to go ask a question, they shouldn't have to log out to go into another platform and then log back in, or if they want to go networking. Serve it up for your attendee and work with your technology providers. that They will share the US ID, that's a user server identifier. It's a number that goes back and forth. So kind of connect the wires in the back. And you do this by an API, which is Application Programming Interface, Digital Handshake. We have it with a couple of companies, we'll, we'll show you in the, next, in the next slide, where it's like, you do this really well. And so when the attendees on that in a registration process, and when they come to time for show, we're passing effortlessly that users, it's a number back and forth. And also for the planner, you really need, since this is the only game in town, virtual and then becomes hybrid, you need your own dashboard. You should not be downloading Excel spreadsheets and uploading this and, and, and fishing around for your content, the digital content, workflow, like we'll show you later that we got into the Zoom by clicking a button within our platform. It was already there for us. Data, everything should be in one platform. It should be served up for what your business needs are. So one thing I'd like to you to remember that with the new technology, whoever you choose, integration is innovation. So it's like work with the best and have them work together. And, you know, it's, it's almost a kumbaya moment. Everyone work together. So I, just as a kind of would be like the perfect universe would be interesting. And I've been dreaming about this for a while. Map Digital, we're there and we do the video. We do content. So you think about content management, webcasting. We do a couple other things on site like digital signage and badging but we're not going to be doing that for a while. This um, A um, symbol there is a company called the Ardian Group. They're based out of uh, Pennsylvania, and they work with the State Department and the government and the UN. They're very, very, very secure registration program. We've already merged our, we've opened our doors in you know, their digital handshake, and you would go back and forth in anticipation of working together. Vivistream, we're going to be seeing later, is a really, really robust uh, uh, event data analytics platform. Now we're not quite API'd together, but that would be my next thing to work. GRIP networking. GRIP is a great program, great networking program, great use of AI, really, really remarkable. We work with them on a program, which I'll talk about later. I will never build a platform like Tim Groot built for GRIP. It's just too good. So I'm going to API into it. And what you have here is a platform thinking. So Everyone's working together, all sharing data and intelligence grows. So this would be my wish for our industry to think platform thinking moving forward. Yeah, that's great. 
Um, and yeah, just a reminder, if anybody has any questions, you can do that through the ask a question button on your screen. Um, yeah, so obviously Marianne, you know, the, the venue I'm sure plays an important role, part as well uh, in hybrid um, and they need to respond to this new situation too. Oh, I think the venue is um, for hybrid is mission critical. The venue has been disrupted. Obviously, many of them, people have been laid off and there's, there's really nothing going on. But in the future, soon, we're going to really need them. We need them in different ways than they're used to servicing us. So I think that once again, everyone has to have better lateral thinking, better, you know, more, more expansive thinking. Because we're, as, again, we're all in this together and we're going to really need the venue because we're going to have need a huge uptick in internet access and the network infrastructure. I mean, that's how rooms and functions are connected. In some venues, um, it, sometimes they look like it was built by an angry squirrel and that's not gonna go anymore because we're gonna rely on everything being pushed in the cloud, everything pushed. Also remember, 5G is coming. It's coming, it is in stadiums and in some couple of uh, event centers. When 5G comes, it's going to be, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around non-latency and what will happen in capacity with 5G. And it's going to be super fast. It also will knock out all the existing networking and equipment and will start from scratch. Now, this would be a perfect time for the venues to partner with the planning and with the technology. See if we can like start from scratch together. Uh, take over a whole new leaf because we're, you know, we're wiping out the old. Number of venues we're talking to are asking us to, to, to discuss with them, work with them on a touchless environment for presentations. No longer is a speaker going to go up to a podium and plug in their laptop and touch cables. It's just not going to happen. This presentation will be collected on the MetaMeetings website, which, or another website, the content management. It's collected, it's reviewed published on the website if permission is given for that, on the webcast if permission is given for that, and it's pushed to the Podium laptop via local area networks. That's why network infrastructure is so critical. Touchless, signage, not running around with the flash drive anymore. Everything has to be wireless. Webcasting, webcasting, every session will be webcast and it'll be video. So we're talking huge amounts of um, bandwidth. Also the venues are gonna talk to their AV companies and. How can we make webcasting less expensive, capturing the video less expensive? Because it is labor intensive. Are there ways that we can, without stepping on any union toes, that we can be more efficient? Because this is gonna be the, the game that we're gonna to have to play. Badging, lead retrieval, all those things are gonna to be touchless. And that means the attendee is gonna be relying on this, on their phone. This is gonna be their passport. And that means you're gonna have a lot of hygienic uh, charging stations and very robust wireless internet access for them to continue to be um, uh, connected. So it's really an opportunity for the venues to think very different on what their business sale or their business platform is selling square feet. You know, maybe they should start thinking about selling the digital space around their venue because this is the game that we're playing is the only game we have. And it means partnering with the, with, with, the, with the technology providers. We're talking to some venues to embed meta meetings within the walls. So once you collect, you know, the, the, we collect the PowerPoints, it gets pushed to the right room, the webcast is there, the signage goes there. It's almost like this little orchestration and there's other, other softwares that can do too. So what happens with that? Maybe we all start sharing cost. Maybe the planner walks in and says, I want to have this embedded. I want to use the whatever's embedded there. I want to, you know, have a, a what's the cost? Then you make it gets attracted because you know it's 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 turnkey. The platform is great. But what you get from that is all the data. So maybe you start sharing the data because the data that the venue might think is important, the planner might not think it's important, but it's important to them. And you know that most conference centers are owned by the city or the destination. And cities are looking to attract certain sectors of business. Um, so it's like, yeah, you know, let's share that data because business tourism spends, a business tourist spends $5 more, 
five times as much as a, a regular tourist. And wouldn't it be really interesting to kind of like foster this smart venues help smart cities? And another byproduct we're thinking, you know, like these business tourists, they have the conference app, you know, the, that comes with plugging into that digital digital smart venue. As soon as they're off the, the phone, that's their passport to the destination too. And you can start pushing, oh, here's your coupon for golf, and here's this, and welcome, welcome to Cincinnati, and all that great things. And, we, and a couple of other destinations have said to us, we really want to position Singapore as a fourth industrial revolution capital. We want to attract those conferences, attract those businesses, that's AI, blockchain, and all that stuff. You know what we want to do? We might want to work with the conferences and do a syndication of their content, almost like a TEDx, like Singapore Presents. So we're seeing different ways of thinking, more expansive, more cooperation, more integration, and you know a little more experimentation. So I think that the, the, the real, real challenge and the real opportunities venues really um, uh, have a lot to think about. And I think uh, the events community, we all need to, to partner with them to say, here's how you can help us. So. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we've talked about stakeholders, we've talked about tech partners, and we just talked about venues. Um, so who else needs to be at a planner's side when they're navigating hybrid? You need a team. You need a team. Because everyone thinks because we're virtual, it just kind of happens. Do you know how many people are on this Zoom helping us right now? <laughs> many people on a help desk? <clears throat> we have people pushing our slides for us because I can't talk and, and also manipulate the Zoom at the same time. It needs a team. And it's a team that's experienced, but more importantly, you need workflow. And you need workflow that's on the platform that you are going to build. Because with Sarah right now, she's on the back end of our meta meetings. We, of course, sent her the Zoom um, you know, URL, but all she had to do was go in the back of meta meetings, click on our, you know, our, our, our work page. You'll know, your audience won't see that. And she just clicks on an icon and she opens into the Zoom. We are working remotely. We don't see each other anymore. You're not in the control center when you say, oh, camera one, camera two. No, you can't run down the corridor to do something or push that speaker on the stage. It really, really, the process is really detailed. So let's have that workflow. Let's have it all on the platform. Somebody might get sick on the platform. Somebody else goes in there. Your experienced team are your, your AV people, um, basically, if really people who've come from video, video engineers, webcast engineers, of course, are critically important. But they also have to know Zoom, WebEx, BlueJeans, Teams, they're all different and they all have you know, gnarly little things that happen sometimes. So knowing this medium is really, really important. Um, I like to think about what we're doing now, like early TV. I used to work, um, one of my mentors is Amira Fiorentino, one of the first lighting directors in television, Playhouse 90. He used to tell me all the stories that used to happen when things would blow up on Playhouse 90. And it's kind of the same thing. I mean, we're kind of figuring this out. The internet, or this is not the most facile. I mean, switching, we can't like do MTV switching back and forth because the internet has a latent latency of like at least 20 seconds, you know, so it's not as facile as we would like it to be, but you know what? Stand by. There's going to be some terrific new and in beta, there is some terrific new software happening. This video space behind me will become a playing field will become another screen, you know, so no more of those, those crazy screens where like, you know, your head kind of fades back. This will actually become a playing field a company called, Mm-hmm. That's M M H M M. It's only in Mac. It's in cuts to PC. It's going to blow up, and it's terrific. So look and see what they're doing. And you know, like I said, everything has to be accessible. As many of the people in my company are from the theater. I used to run a major theater company back in the day, and I think I still run my company like I'm running a theater. <laughs> um, places half hour, you know. Right, yeah. Say, if it's not on the page or the platform, 
it won't get staged. So do all your critical thinking, get everyone what they need. So when we go live and have to deploy, it's at our fingertips. So uh, I, you know, just, just a big shout out to our MAP digital team who basically from that moment, like, oh my gosh, to now literally have produced over a thousand live web, web sessions like this. And we're gearing up to do our big show, which is 500 live sessions in four days in, I think, 14 tracks. And we've been doing this very large conference, um, webcasting, of course, um, for over 20 years. But to do it virtually, we're going to need twice the number of staff because we have to get the speakers there. They're not just arriving. It's all different critical thinking to do. So really uh, look for your, if it's an internal team or an external team, the best thing is the experience and workflow because really truly in digital and hybrid, God is in the details. So that's basically, you know, at this point, I mean, I could, oh, oh, here's some of our workflow. I mean, we, because we, we, we build software too, uh, we have a back end that is like, you can't say the dog ate your homework. It's on the platform. The content's on the platform. The speaker's presentation's not in your email. It's on the platform. So this is great. This is what Sarah went to, the bottom one here. You know, here's an event, the time, all that good stuff, what track. You click on that little icon. You're in the Zoom. You don't have to remember anything. Here's your participants. You click on those links. That's their contact. Hey, you have to get in the Zoom. You're about to go live in five minutes. And the one on the top is our workflow is like, is this going to be webcast? Do we have the slides? It's our dashboard. You know, it's anyone who's an AV. This is like, you know, this is like a geek. Like this is like, here's everything we need to know. And it's all there, you know, visually. And I can sort and I can click. So it's help, help that team, help your, your producing team, help you by getting on a platform. Yeah. So I think that's... Yeah, it's it's when you're when you're in the firing line, you want you want as many good tools as you can get when these in this in this new live virtual environment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so what what is this final step that that planners need to take? Um, this is probably one of you know their most critical partners that they need to be aware of, and something we've talked about you and I in, in the meetings today, team, pretty extensively. Well, the last one is maybe it should have been the first one. Is your attending? We've all been disrupted, you know. We've been busier than we've ever been in our life, and we're grateful for that. But the attendees have been disrupted, you know. They don't commute. They are at home. They wear socks. They don't wear shoes. Um, they this medium. We're still trying to figure this medium out because it is kind of cold in a way, but it's also can be very interactive. It can be very personalized. I mean, they can click around and get what they want, like on our meta meetings platform. You could be looking at the slides as we're talking, downloading, asking questions. But so we need to talk to our attendees because they're all we have. You know, they're not getting on a plane and, you know, you know, packing a suitcase, getting on a plane, going to general session, greeting friends in the hallway. So empathetically, what are they going through and what can we listen to them? Maybe they'll give us some clues. They might surprise us on some things that we could be doing that would really, really help and enhance their experience. Um, so that's something we take and we try to talk to attendees to say, how can we do better? What do you need from us? Um, it's, 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 it's in many ways when you, we, Map Digital follows some of the tenets of design thinking. And the first place you start is at the consumer and you ask the empathetic question, what is your problem? Because it's my job as the, as the service provider to solve your problem. So that's something to really start thinking of your attendee as being a partner. They're gonna tell you what they want because this is all new to everybody. So let's, let's, let's communicate, let's try some things, let's, let's experiment. Um, it's also very important as you'll, you'll, we'll see in the next couple of slides, that it's really important to map your attendees journey. You'll get all this data and to make that data in a relationship way, um, you really will see an arc that you probably never saw before in um, face to face. One of our, one of our clients, a financial service client who was 
you know, invest, you know, working with us and saying, you know, we were looking to have a, a unified events platform for our enterprise. And I was like, oh, real, please choose me, choose me. Well, they did. So that's nice. But here's some of the critical questions I was asking them. I'm going, you know, why are you looking for one platform? This is a good question to ask, you know, because you want to see where the pain is for any of your clients uh, so that you can sell better, but also that you can provide better. Um, so said something, oh, well, you know, corporately, we have about 85 event apps all through the country. You know, somebody's brother has an event app and they use it in Brazil. First of all, it's against compliance. Okay, then we talked about data before and data security. You have all that variability, you have danger. Okay, they also have different workflow. This is how you upload data on this one, you do it differently on that one. There's not a consistency throughout the whole organization on how to work. And if somebody leaves, they have that legacy knowledge and you have to train somebody. It's also, they had problems with branding. People, uh, this app didn't put the headline like this and all of that. And, you know, whether they're, you know, 20 lines of business in six regions, they should have a consistent branding. So he said to me, that's all really important. Obviously, we need to do that. But what's most important to us is that we can't tell when a customer maybe went to an investment banking conference, right? Then they went over to Singapore and they went to a retail conference. Then they had um, a dinner with private wealth. If we are fragmented like that, we can't arc our customer's journey through our marketing and sales campaign. And that is a deficit that we need to change. So if we're talking about how success would be measured, how to go from a cost center to a profit center, is mapping the attendee journey, especially in your C-suite, because they're the ones who are looking for that. And, you know, with that being said, I, I blurted this out like three years ago. I was on stage with Dahlia Elgazar and Mel Michelle Bruno. We call ourselves uh, the event with the event tech witches because we all, well, my hair is different now, but we all had different color hair, but it was all curly. Um, I just said, oh, data is currency. And the whole, the whole audience cracked. But data is currency, you know, plan your events so that you can gather that data that you need strategically and it also trans transform into revenue. So let's look at some of the data. Let's look at a case study that we did. Um, we, um, meaning Map Digital, was asked to help out a friend in Poland, part of this large women's network, uh, the Equality Moonshot. We work with Global Women, Global Summit of Women. We, that's our, these are our pro bono accounts. Um, and this woman um, was producing a very, very ambitious fourth industrial revolution conference in Poland, one of the first real Davos level uh, speakers and, and content. And she just, I guess the sisterhood said, send Marianne over there and give you a a hand. And I said, sure, why not? Because we could do anything we wanted. So here's where we basically, if you remember the slide of the platform and working with other other um, uh, technology providers, that's what we did. So I, I went over to Poland with these little devices called Live Shell in my hand baggage. Just plugged it into the camera, plugged it into the internet, boom, we were webcasting to London and my team back here in 56 Level Street were, in, were capturing that encoded sessions. Okay, so when I walked on stage on day two, and said, okay, ladies and gentlemen, on this website, every session that happened yesterday is now available on the MetaMeetings platform. The video, the slides, you can still ask a question of the speakers because it's still open. Literally got a standing ovation. <laughs> were beside themselves. I mean, first of all, they're not used to that in Poland. The generosity of it, which they said it wasn't. To me, it wasn't generosity. It was just good business to keep that content and that data going. But they were like in their seats, watching the video, sending it to their colleagues, downloading the slides, asking the question. One person I was on stage was like asking me a question, asking you to meet me. And my, I got, listen, I'm on stage, you know? So it was really, really interesting. The data was superb. So that's one thing. We, we decided we were gonna capture the content. We also worked with Rip on this and we got the artificial intelligence, the, the, everybody by your, your footprint from LinkedIn mostly. 
Um, do you have metadata? So um, I'm from Philadelphia. I speak a bad French. I was in theater. Now I'm a techno. So that kind of matching was great. But we also looked at that too, not just to make the meetings, but who was our audience? Okay. And then with when we had to with the meta meetings with all the sessions, every session has a metadata. Okay. This session is about AI. This session is about blockchain. This session is about startups. This session. So. We were just kind of playing with, and this is before GDPR. This was before. Now we'd be much more careful with that. All permission, you know, and any of you who signed in and wanted to be private, we don't know who you are. And if you ask a question, if you don't give us your email, we don't get to it, um, we won't be able to answer you. So if you, if you are private and you want to ask a question, please put your email in there and I won't share it for sure. Um, so we had all this data. So we, went to our friend Nick Figaro of Vivistream and say, Nick, can you, can you give us a hand here? It's kind of interesting. He goes, Marianne, give me every piece of data you can. So you can see by this wheel, you know, white, you know, the registration, the boot scans, all of this, emails. So we had registration, we had all the meta meetings, the contextual, who watched what, who downloaded, who sent off, and this little pie plate here. If you watched a webcast, you got eight points. If you download a slide, you got six. So we just made up some you know, weights. We put everything together and they also did a survey that they sent out to the, to the attendees. What was your favorite session? So we put it all in the mix and we're going around and you know, we come up that what the survey, what the attendees said was their favorite session is not what the combined data told us. So if we go to the next slide, we can, can, can see that. Um, this is basically, well, this is, yeah, this is, excuse me, I, I got ahead of myself. This is the metadata. So this is how we weighed it. So this is, you know, how many people answered the survey and how many people did the, the webcast. The next slide will show the results. If you want to advance that, please. Okay, these are the, 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 the top sessions. They're a little small. When you take photos off of software, sometimes it gets a little small. So there's always those speakers, you know, the keynotes that deliver that like, you know, best in the business or like, you know, you're going to be a unicorn business in two weeks and all that kind of good stuff that really are experiential and bring down the house. And many times they get the top ratings because they have, they fulfilled that emotional theater coming together face to face need. But when it came to, we put all the data together, how many people went back and looked at the sessions or clicked or forwarded those people found themselves in the middle because I don't think people go back to watch a speech that moved them. Many of them, what we, what we discovered from the data is that they went back to those sessions that were how to's, how to use the blockchain, how to do this, how to, you know, um, how will AI affect medicine because it would help them in their business. And they were the ones who were most shared. So you need both, but you know, isn't it interesting that it's more of an afterlife with how to than, you know, you need that keynote. People will come for that keynote, but they'll keep coming back on demand for those how to's. So that's one thing about putting your attendee at the center and, and seeing what their behavior really is. They might tell you in a survey, pre survey, that they want to do something, that they love telecom, but their booth visits are all software companies. So it's interesting. And then here's another thing where we can map that attendee's journey. So this person was very, very active. That's not his name because GDP already had to move it. If I saw this in an event planner, I would um, go to this person and they're an influencer. I would sit down and ask them to help me curate content. Why not? And this is the arc of their journey. And, you know, with permission, some of my sponsors, this person is probably somebody who could become a customer. So there's a lot of things you can have. Got to be careful with the data, all of that stuff, get advice, but you can really do some wonderful things. So next slide, please. Yeah, so why don't we, why don't we recap and maybe go through those, those five steps all together again. Well, it's, you know, it's almost like get everyone on the same page, just like we called everyone, everyone to the whiteboard, everyone, everyone can contribute, you know, and, you know, some of our people who were temps were really like came up with some great ideas, you know, so the time now is for deep collaboration. Uh, and because you also, no one's an expert. 
not even me, not even my team, because we know there's more, the bigger things that are happening out there, very in, in expansive, new, new, like, 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 and like, you know, using this background as, um, as, as a playing field. I mean, it's great. Who thought of that? That's what we needed to, right? Um, integrate your tech stack. It's good housekeeping. Please do it. Please invest in your technology providers. I'm a technologist. I love problems and I love solving them for my clients. So let's have a partnership and let's partner with others. Like I said, I would never build a networking platform, but I'd partner with you and I have. So, I mean, that level of cooperation is really needed. So, and build a platform because this is long, long tail, okay? Um, the venues really have very interesting um, uh, road ahead and we need them when we go back. There's gonna be so many things that we're gonna be planners and even technology people are gonna be relying for them on. So this is almost a separate, I mean, I think that meetings today would almost could have a separate, you know, session on this because, you know, this is really very interesting stuff. And it's also your team. It's all about the team. It's always about the team. And, you know, uh, many of some of the event platforms uh, that are out there, some of them don't support the team. I think more and more they will because it is, it's, it's cumbersome, it's difficult. So, and also have the workflow. Once again, if you take away from this, it's platform, platform, platform. Let's get everyone on the page. And it's map your attendees journey. Um, I think that's where we're gonna find relevance, new revenue, and new ways of communicating that are gonna be exciting for both the attendee and for the producer. So at this point, we should see if we have questions. Yeah, um, again, there's an ask, uh, ask a question button on your screen if anybody has any questions. Um, let's see here. I should look too. <laughs> uh, um, I think we have one here. I think they wanted you to go, maybe go back over. Um, we are talking about like security and like third party. Um, yeah. This is the heart attack. And um, I must tell you, uh, you say the word compliance in my office and people are like, <laughs> it, it, it's really, you know, it was a very difficult and it was very arduous for us to get it. Um, it's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of, you know, disaster recovery and like, you know, looking at how your systems mm -hmm. are placed. But you know what? It made it in the long run, but it was hard, very hard and made us better and then also serve our clients better. You really need to talk to a professional because <clears throat> if you're collecting email addresses and someone hacks the system and has the emails and they get published the emails, you're responsible. And that's the, the federal government does not uh, take that very lightly. That's, you know, that is, I don't know what it is, but it, it is possible. You can get prosecuted and, you know, you don't want to be in the news and you don't want to be in the courts. So you really need to take data protection extremely seriously. So third party oversight, you can't get out of it by saying my vendor made a mistake. And intellectual property is another thing. More in the financial, if people upload their slides and they're a publicly traded company, <coughs> that information cannot get out before the right time because it could be inside trading. Not that we, inside, but you know, we need to be very, very mindful of this. And also your attendees will, will not trust you if you do not keep their data safe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, GDP would be very interesting too. It's gonna get deeper. Yeah, and then we have a couple questions here again. It's just about, you wanna go over again, maybe how to see this presentation again, like how it's, how it'll be content that they can view later. Just go to the same URL that uh, you are now and it will be on demand, you know, tomorrow morning. Um, we're going to go and uh, do a quality assurance, do a little edits, uh, we have to publish it. And uh, we will send you out, um, people who are attending, we'll send you out an email, you know, it's published. And it'll be up for, you know, another month or so, maybe two months. And uh, feel free to download the content. Feel free to um, uh, ask a question. We will stop the questions, but you can reach me. My email address is in my profile. So look at my, my, my pick and bio uh, when I had different color hair. Um, that's right, Sarah, the, the, the photograph you have of me is like, that's five years old. This is 
this is COVID here, right? But um, yeah, no, really reach out to us. If you have any questions, uh, definitely email me. And as you know, I will answer you as I answered many people in the past. Great. Um, let's see. It looks like there's a question here if, about you um, maybe going over again the selling of, of digital space of the venue. Maybe you, know, you have bandwidth to going over that again. Oh, for the venues. Well, if you, if you just think of your venue, I mean, how many people here have loved to negotiate the bandwidth cost for their event? Well, that's just going to amplify. So I think the venues are going to, to realize that if everything's going to be in the cloud and not touchless, that means you're going to need the bandwidth in which to get the attendees and the producers and the speakers in the cloud. Okay. So that will require a lot of internet, a lot of bandwidth. Also, they're going to have to network better. Um, we are working with a venue that says, oh, we really love your metamuse, love to use it. But the, these five uh, meeting rooms are not networked to the center closet, so they can't be on with you. We need to think, you know, these, 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 are, like, these, are, these are the highways, the routes. These need to be redone. Um, the digital space, well, it's kind of a, you know, this is a little more Star Wars, but wouldn't it be great um, if, it, if a venue says, oh, well, we have a content management platform. You just have your speakers uploaded here, and then we just push it to the room for you, and we'll have a conference website because we already have the database and we already have the schedule. And we can also pull the digital signage because it's all there, or you can bring your own in. But wouldn't it be great if you just kind of goes, just plug right into this. And then webcasting, since webcasting will be required, you know, to whether people enter Zooms, have, coming in Zooms and people are in the ballroom, they all have to be webcast. They all have to be, you know, on a, on a video platform. So planners are going to need a lot of help because, you know, are you going to bring all these vendors in? I mean, maybe we should all talk about how can we simplify this and integrate this and share cost and share the benefits which could be data and, and revenue that's produced from different experiences that the data generates. So I hope, I mean, it's kind of, um, kind of a dream I have, but I think it's possible. Um, I mean, it, I don't think it would have been possible before COVID, before this disruption. It would have been a little too far-fetched, but now it's the only game we have right now. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Um, it looks like we have a question that says, um, when you're on a short-term lead to organize a hybrid event, what are the most effective ways to communicate to your audience to map their journey? When you're on a short-term lead, okay, I'm not quite sure what that means, but you basically have to put something together in a-, in a, in a I think that, yeah. Hmm. Well, you, you need to have a platform that you're working with that's collecting their data. You know, who, like, who watched, who downloaded, all of that. I mean, I think you have to look at your platform because your platform is the one, once your attendee gets on the platform, are you tracking who went on the, on, on the webcast, who downloaded the slides, who asked a question? That's the only way you can do it. And then when you have that data, um, you start to analyze it. You can do it yourself if you want, if you're really good at flipping Excel spreadsheets, or you can get those analytical pro, uh, platforms like Bear you know, out of DC, there's Vivistream, there's many other ones. Yeah, you need, first of all, you need to capture. You need to have a platform that will capture the actions of your attendee. And you also need to design that experience so there is choice, there is interactivity, so you can get a little bit more than just they watch the webcast. Maybe they networked, I mean, you can't get into some of the privacy stuff, but you know, you almost have to create the experience where there's many places they can touch something that will trigger data. I hope that answered Great. your question. Great. Um, yeah, well, it looks like those are the questions we have so far. If anybody else has a question, again, the ask a question button should be on your screen. Um, but, so I have a question for you, Sarah. Yeah, please. Yeah, I mean, so what are you planners asking you at meetings today? I mean, what are some of the pain points that you're hearing or that your editors are, are, are addressing? Yeah, well, I think that last question about short, short lead time um, is probably, I'm sure, a pain point for many planners right now. But, um, you know, we all want to meet face-to-face -face again. Um, um, 
but I think planners do know that when they do, you know, meet face to face again, we're all still going to have some kind of virtual component to go to go with that live event. Um, and budget is always something I think that is top of mind for planners. So I think what you're ta you talked about in the presentation, I think a little bit is, you know, how not to make hybrid, you know, just a cost center, but making it more like an avenue for profit too. I think that's really a value to planners. You need to, you, it was the, the people who can profit are your other stakeholders, you know, and I think sometimes <clears throat> every, everyone's different, but sometimes planning gets siloed. Sometimes they report to a CFO, sometimes it's right under sales, sometimes marketing, sometimes marketing doesn't have the budget because sales won't give it to them. We need to get over these silos at this point. Here's a lovely opportunity to disrupt your own organization saying, hey, we're all in this together. And here's what we can do if, okay, if price is such a big problem, believe me, just because we work for financial services doesn't mean that they're like you know, throwing money at us. I can tell you one thing that happened to us, and this is where we proved that we went from a cost center to a profit center that we are API into our into some of our co our companies and we become part of their workflow so it's easier they just they just they the agenda they key it once and we're pulling it in on our platform so we're saving them time and money there but also more importantly we're touching their customers so since someone logs in i can be pushing you sarah your one-on-one -on -one meetings i'm pulling it from the, the 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 inside of the organization to you or I see your metadata or the, the, someone says, well, let's send Sarah this, this report. We become part of the value proposition. So we were asked by the sales department of, of a company to do some really interesting, complicated programming. And we gave them a number that we said, oh, they'll never go for it. But it was the number. They made up their mind and said, yes, within less than 24 hours. You know why? it affected their bottom line. So I think that's the, the, the transformation that we need to be thinking about in the partnership. Of course, price matters, but doing good business matters too. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we have time for maybe one more question and one, more, one just came in. Um, someone asked, what are some key questions I should ask a, pers a prospective platform provider? Ooh, very good. Um, we can't say show me your code because that's rude. But um, I think you have to see who else they've worked with. I think you should talk to their customers always. And you should talk to them about security and compliance. The features are great. I mean, some of, some of these new platforms have really their bells and whistles and they're great. But some of them have been in the event space for less than two years. So let's make sure they really understand, you know, what your pain points are um, and will they support you? That's another thing. Sometimes these platforms are do it yourself and that means you're on your own. And we have a, you can use our meta meetings platform, do it yourself. And none of our clients do. They want us to do it. We have a whole team that will do it because they have other things to do. They have to service their client. They have to, you know, build their show, their, their, their audience client and their internal client. They just want us to run the show. So I would ask also about their compliance, what level of compliance and security they have. Um, and that's critically important. And also, will they support you and talk to, and talk to um, other clients? Great. Um, yeah, well, those were some great questions. Thank you, everybody who submitted a question. Um, and thank you again to Marianne and to Map Digital for helping us bring this session to you today um, from Planet IMAX. Um, and yeah, and of course, thanks to Planet IMAX and, and, uh, and IMAX for, for hosting us. And uh, yeah, we hope you all enjoyed the event this week. Um, and if you'd like to learn more from Marianne, we plan to host, I think, a couple of webinars with her um, in the future. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. We're going to bring stakeholders to the table. And you're going to, basically going to reenact that Zoom when I had 12 people coming in. <laughs> so we're going to show that, you know, how we can do some creative thinking together and maybe some great new ideas for the industry but thank yeah. you who joined us and thanks to the map digital team yeah thank you guys <laughs> bye have a good weekend thanks bye guys <laughs>